Well, hey everybody, how are you? Um, happy Wednesday, hump day, how you doing? Uh, we're gonna do um, a little video here, just short, relatively short, for um, talking about how to develop and maintain be believability, meaning are people really going to believe that you're a bona fide, um, not expert, but a person who can help them in the law firm? And will you have a professional demeanor? Will you have this professional attitude when you come into that law firm? Now, let's talk just briefly about your social media presence talked about it recently in a video, but this is where it comes down to believability. Like, will you be that professional person that they need in the law firm? Will you fit the bill? Will you fit what they're looking for? So they will go on exploration like you do on social media. They will go look at Google and put your name in Google. They'll put your name in your city in Google to find you. If you have a generic name like I do, where there are bazillions of Leslie Williams, then um, they will put your city in there and hone it down and they'll probably see your picture come up on Google in, in some social media uh, venue like Facebook or um, Snapchat or Instagram, right? So how, what kind of presence do you have there? What, how, what are they going to see? Will they see a person who um, has a foul or look at and see foul postings, like with a lot of swearing and um, non-professional way of being? They, they will get a picture of someone when they look through the social media um, outlets that you have posted on. And not all of them can be made private, right? I mean, I know Instagram can be and Facebook, but um, some of the others, you know, you can't just, um, you can stop people from liking or, you know, coming on board. But uh, a lot of what you have said on social media and what you have, the pictures you have posted are there for the world to see. So really take into account, what does your personal profile look like? The picture at the top, all of that on Facebook or any of the social media outlets you're part of. What kind of um, person are you projecting? You know, you can't leave that to chance because when they go, they don't know who you are. You could be the best person in the world, but they don't know who you are, okay? So we've discussed this in other videos, watch some of the other videos um, during the last couple of weeks that are here and watch them also on the YouTube channel, Paralegal Career Mastermind, to get an idea. I think I did a video over there a while ago just on social media. So Paralegal Career Mastermind is the YouTube channel. Okay, so let's go to the next section. When they do, and if they do, some places don't do a background check. That is their background check, that they go see where you are. And if you've given any references, what I do is when I send a resume off, I say references available upon request, okay? Um, I don't automatically include them. I used to, but I, I really don't. Um, I want them to call me and, and ask me for that. So um, that's pretty much at the beginning, their background check. They'll go to LinkedIn. And as I've said in another video, you should build a profile in LinkedIn. And as you add skill sets that are relevant to the paralegal field, you need to post those on LinkedIn. So that when they find you, and if your, your profile looks really great on LinkedIn, I would include that on your resume, okay? So that it will take them there too. 
and keep them focused on LinkedIn, okay? So here's a question for you. Do you look at yourself as a reliable person? Why? Now, you know what I say about this, right? Write down re reliable for you. Why? This is a good exercise for you to understand how to cover that when they ask you certain questions in the interview. Why are you reliable? Are you a person who can be counted on? When something crops up in the office and you got to get it done. As soon as the, the, um, the clock hits five o'clock or whenever you're scheduled to leave or five 30, are you barreling out the door and leave? And are you that type that's going to leave things unfinished? You can't finish everything in the legal field. Like every, all your, your to-do list, believe me, will be more than one page, um, of, of a legal pad or maybe the whole page, but, um, are who, what is it? A, what are your strengths? Why should they think that you are a credible person? What does credible mean? It means you're believable and you're trustworthy. They can trust you. Why? Why? So that's, you don't have to tell me. Write it down. Why? Do you have leadership abilities? Have you taken on the um, a project wherever you worked? Are uh, what else? Um, and that's that's leadership. Have you organized something? Or, you know, to get people to do something. Simple as it may seem to you, it's not so simple. That's leadership. Um, now, let's talk about things that go left unsaid by the hiring attorney or the office manager, whoever is looking at your resume and cover letter. They need to know one thing that they don't have to take you by the hand when you show up there on day one and show you every single thing to do. Yeah, they'll show you to your computer and where you sit and all of that. If they haven't, if they didn't do that during the interview when they were, you know, you might have had one interview and then they decided to hire you and you never got to see where you're going to sit. Um, they're not going to, they may say, here's your login and password for the computer and your attorney will be meeting with you in a little while or your, that may be, your attorney's not going to usually show you or give you your login and password. It's going to be somebody else in the office. But how are you ready to start on day one? This is for you. That you walk in, you know exactly what to do. Now, of course, the attorney has to give you, you know, hey, this, you know, talk about the cases and, and uh, say this is where we are. Or they'll say, go look through the file and figure it out. You know, or this is the hot case right now, so focus on that. You know, they, they have to give you some, a little bit of direction, but don't count on a lot. And don't count on them taking you by the hand and schooling you in the way of being a para, how to be a paralegal. They're not going to do that. You know, as I've said, I had more training in fast food or retail. So they don't do that in the legal field, even if they say it in the ad. Be careful with that. Okay. Don't depend on that. And they won't depend on that, you know, they are going to respond to you with a call for an interview when you have proven that you know how to do some things. Yeah, so when you send a resume and a cover letter out that doesn't prove it, that's why you don't hear back. And that includes for people who have two-year degrees or a certificate. You can't just go, here's my certificate. Here's my degree. 
You must get it. You must understand what that means. No, they know what it means. They know you don't know the practical side of how to help the attorney every day. So that's what you have to know before you go in. Hi, Ro. Good to see you. So someone asked me, but how do I take everything, all the work history from the past and make that count towards the paralegal field? Well, you know, you have to do your homework. Again, no leading by the hand and no spoon feeding from me or the people that you send your resume and cover letter to. You have to figure that out before you send all that off. You have to figure out, okay, this attorney is in this area of law, needs a paralegal for that area of law. What does that mean? What do those paralegals do every day? Do I know any of that? No, then you have to learn it. They don't teach you that in the law firm or the government agency or the corporate headquarters if they, you know, like NASCAR employs a paralegal. Um, so they wouldn't expect that NASCAR, that you would come in and that somebody there is going to teach you. Nobody there knows. It would be, they have an attorney off site. That attorney has no time to run a school. So what is it that you know how to do to help the attorney in that area of law? You've got to take everything that you've learned that were the things that you excelled at and mark those down in your notebook. That you felt, yeah, I, I, I was good at that. I was good at it. You know, I learned personally how to chit chat with customers as a cashier at a supermarket. That was my first job. So I learned how to do that. But would, could I bank on that as the thing that's going to get me the paralegal job? No, that's like one thing. There have to be many things that make them decide, I want you. But you have to, it's not just personality, it's not just I'm great with customers, that, and that I'm organized. <clears throat> you have to know what a paralegal does, who majors in that area of law, what do they do every day? What do they do? You have Google at your disposal. You have me in the paralegal inner circle class we have a class going that just started jump on board if you can if you cannot you have to learn that on your own okay so i'm getting ready to do a video in the newest class right after this video um <clears throat> a live video so don't have expectations that they're going to take you by the hand or spoon feed. You have to use all the resources that are available to you on Google and try to pull it together. Um, so when I would look at my past experience before I jumped into the legal field, I knew that I was good at bringing puzzle pieces together. That's not what I would say in an interview, but that I am a um, strong organizer, very organized. I'm a people person. I am, even though I'm an introvert slash extrovert, um, I like dealing with, I, and I wouldn't say dealing, I, I like working with clients and assisting them within um, the bounds of a paralegal, never giving advice, you know, so that's, that's a great answer, but how does that help you start on day one? It doesn't, it really doesn't. So you have to know what, what are those things that that type of paralegal does? It's not just the word paralegal. It's what type of paralegal is that? There are hundreds of different areas of law. 
what does that paralegal do every day? So your research skills have to come into play. And you have to zone in on what, what does a family law paralegal do? What does a personal injury paralegal do every single day? Now, when you start looking those things up, you have to sift through the stuff that doesn't pertain to that, you know, and there's a lot on Google that doesn't help. There are a lot of advertisements for school that pops up and that's what they're trying to sell, but it doesn't help you understand what that paralegal does. Okay. But that's what you have to know so that when you go in there and they give you an assignment that for the most part you go, Oh, okay, right. I know how to do that. And you're not sitting there like deer in the headlights. Because that's people's, one of the number one fears that I hear. I don't, how will I know what I'm doing? That takes a lot of research and learning doesn't mean school. Because they don't teach you the practical side in school. And they don't teach you that in a certificate program. Um, you know, you know, I'm going to be straight with you. So that's okay to do those things. But there's a whole segment that you're missing. So you have to do that research on your own um, or you take my class, but I always say you can do it on your own. Okay. So when you pick apart your past work experiences, if you have any, if you're like young, you're 18 years old, you might not have a lot. That's okay. But there might've been things that you did outside of work, so to speak, that showed your leadership abilities or, um, and if you don't have anything where it showed, like when I worked as a cashier, I didn't, um, I wouldn't have shown leadership abilities, so to speak at that point. Uh, later on I did, but, and I did at 18, 19, I certainly did because that's what was coming out. And I don't know that I even recognized it then. You know, so I want you to recognize it. What an attorney needs is a problem solver. He, he or she does not need you looking at them for the answers. You find a lot of the answers. They're going to give you guidance. You know, they're going to give you guidance as to you got to work on this first. Please don't work on anything else. That's my communication with my attorney. Um, where I know without assuming what's more important, they don't want you to assume. That's not leadership. That's going off on your own. That's not leadership. Leadership is knowing. Also, you might be the, you might be a leadership in, you know, helping to organize things or working as a team and you become a leader in the, in a law firm or wherever you work, but you always have to remember who's employing you, right? So you never use the word customer in legal. You use the word client. So I'm client oriented. Now, if you say that in an interview, I want you to know why, because they may ask you, well, how so? How are you client oriented? See, so for every statement you're making, I want you to be able to explain it. You understand that when an attorney is interviewing you, it's not that they want to grill you. It's just that they are so used to working in a world where people make statements and they want to find out more about that because they do that in the courtroom or when they're talking with a client and a client makes a statement they need to they need to pull that apart because they don't want any surprises you understand so the last thing they want is an employee that surprises them in a bad way even if you have zero experience and most of you do not have any experience on this page um, that's why you're here because you're entry level then you've got to start gathering knowledge. You're the knowledge gatherer, always. 
even when you have 30 years experience, you're the knowledge gatherer, you're the problem solver. So how are you going to solve this problem where you don't know what that job requires? You need to get on Google and research your heart out. Got it? You don't, what happens is I see a lot of people, somebody came on yesterday during the live video and wanted me to do her homework for her. When you need, that person needed to do that right on Google. And that's what I said, you have to go to Google and use that as your BFF. Truly do that, okay? It's when I, when the internet arrived, I was on it in 1996. I had already been in the legal field for six years. Incredible asset for paralegals. So there's no reason to not know these things. When you start investigating and you use a notebook to track what you're learning, as you look up certain areas of law that you're interested in, but also where, you know, if you haven't watched the video that I have on my um, paralegal subscriber hub, then, and you haven't gotten, you're not on my email list, you need to get on that and you get on it simply, go to my website, paralegalcoffeetalk.com and get one of the items there. One's 19 alternative paralegal careers list and you'll see it at the top of the website. The other one is free chapter of my book, Legal Break-In. Get either one of those or both. You'll be on the email list. Um, you'll be direct, you can find, because that link will take you there, to my free subscriber hub, okay? There's a video in there for the, that I made specifically for this situation that we're in now. The four areas of law that will be hot in the next 20 months and maybe longer. So you need to watch that video. It's not on YouTube, it's unlisted. It's only for my subscribers, okay? So go subscribe and then watch that video, okay? So your credibility, your believability as a paralegal, um, your, whether they can really truly rely on you or not will be by what you're bringing to the table from your past work experiences, as well as all the research you've done in those areas of law and what paralegals do in those areas of law. Okay. So as my my students go through my course, this will all start to make sense slowly. So they will see what the powerhouses are that paralegals use to stay organized, what we use. Um, we use three or four items at the very least to keep us organized. And, they're spe and they can be specific to areas of certain areas of law too and tailored for that so that we're not guessing we net we're not doing guesstimates in the legal field we are looking at okay i've got to do this 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 and we've got it nailed down why because we have people depending on us the attorneys depending on us and the client to do a great job we're the warriors that are oftentimes behind the scenes um, we are administrative, organizational experts. We're pulling all those puzzle pieces together. And it's unbelievable how much knowledge you'll gain just from doing what I said in this video. And believing in yourself. First, you've got to understand that within yourself, you have to have believability in your own self that you can do this. Because if you don't, then how are the employers going to believe you? And this is an incredible opportunity for you to learn this now and set yourself up for when the job market opens up. Okay, can't say when it's gonna open up. 
nobody knows that's the scary part right um somebody just told me yesterday they you know they had a second interview coming up so it's not like people aren't hiring so don't you know it's if the job ads have disappeared then hold on tight but get prepared for when things open up and now you've got that you can't stop believing now now's the time to go okay I'm gonna keep learning and you've got to organize what you're learning so that you can refer back to it you never know when these nuggets you find will come in handy for you and I can guarantee they will so get have that notebook I'll show you what because I couldn't go to the I, I just chose not to go to the Dollar Tree when it was still open because everything was breaking loose a month ago with the COVID but I ordered a bunch of these notebooks on Amazon almost as cheap as Dollar Tree but not quite but almost because they're what I use um, to brainstorm and when I'm doing research um, when I'm my mind is boggled because I can't find what I really am looking for and it drives me nuts um, I'm using notebooks to track where I've been and uh, that's just how I work but have a notebook that these are pretty thin for one area of law that you're researching or have half of it for the one area of law the other half for another area okay so your believability is going to be in how much you know how much knowledge you're bringing to the table how much legal knowledge and um, the organizational ability and what that what that paralegal needs to know what you need to know for that area of law so Google is an ace okay Google is this incredible resource and you need to act like almost like you were gonna write a book on what this paralegal does every day if that's what you have to do like play like to change it up okay I have to do a report in two days on what this paralegal does and what he or she uses to stay organized to do blah 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 to do all this in that area of law okay not five areas of law one area of law pick one and when you go looking at job ads and things like this that's something you should be looking at then look up more than one area of law after you've tackled one so um, I, I that's that's the the way that you prove yourself to an attorney when they're looking they are they are more than willing to hire people with zero experience but the more that you can learn to get over that barrier of no experience they are they definitely hire people with zero experience I can attest to that my students that took my course back in uh, May and June um, and the September crowd got interview the one lady in my September course um, by I think it was even at the slow time it's it's you it was usually very slow all across the US for jobs in um, from Thanksgiving until Christmas was over and she ended up landing interviews then so don't think oh they just stopped working all the lawyers stopped working and all the paralegals stopped working and now everything's still no 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 everybody's still working on cases and so and the attorneys are still working and people still need help and so that's going on that's going on and there might not be as many attorneys hiring right at the moment but that's going to change so get ready prepare yourself now okay and get that believability 
um, that the fact that they can trust what you know, get that to a place where it's incredible for you. And over the next, I don't know, two, three weeks, increase your legal knowledge of that area of law. It, you could do that in one week and then change it up to another area of law next week and make that your project, okay? So l push yourself to do this and it will pay off because that's the person you'll be in the law firm that nobody will tell you no. Nobody will say um, that, oh, she can never find anything. You're, the, you're gonna be the one that they look to to find things because of all the research you're doing right now. And instead of sitting back and waiting for them to teach you at the law firm, which will not happen, mark my words, then you have to do that You're on your own, okay? All right, so that is it for today. Um, any questions, and you might have said something about Facebook, and I apologize, Facebook doesn't show it. Um, I see one comment. So, um, and usually when I sign off, I'll see 10 or 20. So uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, you know, yesterday's video was kind of strange because, um, you know, somebody just appears asking for help with homework. Um, I don't, I don't help with homework. Google is there for that, but Google is there for so much more than that. Okay. So hit it hard and get prepared. And if you can take the class, jump in to paralegal inner circle class, it's on the website, paralegal cough talk, coffee talk, and you'll see information there about it. That's my basset hound. He's saying the video has to end, Mom. Okay, have a great one. And, oh, now the poodle. The poodle is howling. Okay, good ending. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.